What's up guys? Another day, uh, some more construction going on in the background. Uh, as I watched the video from the other day, I realized that that sound is not the greatest, uh, but it's just too nice, again, not to be outside. So uh, I'm here outside again in Michigan and I wanted to make another Spark video. Uh, I had someone shoot me a message this morning uh, wondering about how to use multiple images in Spark. Uh, and that was something that I thought was interesting. Um, not something I've done a ton of, but I know a little bit about just because I've been using the tool. Uh, but this is definitely one of those topics that I'm open to having more of a discussion about. Uh, I'm always open to learning more things, but most of the stuff that I know, it's like, okay, I know this and that's why I'm teaching it. Uh, this is one of the things where I'm going to show kind of what I know. And if you guys know anything else, I've definitely learned a lot from this community and the community that we have on Facebook. Uh, so feel free to post that stuff down in the comments and let me know if there's a better way of doing this. Uh, but I'm just going to talk about kind of the differences between PNG and JPEG and how Spark interacts with them uh, and just some of my suggestions for how to use images inside of Spark. But all right, let's go back inside, jump into this, and I'll show you my over-the-shoulder view. Back inside, once again, uh, looking some over the shoulder of Spark. Uh, hopefully you guys have checked this program out by now. Uh, but today I want to talk again specifically about using different types of images inside of Spark. Um, there is a library that's built right in that will allow you to uh, go ahead and search for hundreds of, if not thousands, or hundreds of thousands of photos. Uh, and you can even import photos through different uh, methods here on this right hand side once you are in this photos tab. Um, but we're going to be looking looking at today is the difference between uploading a JPEG image and a PNG image with a transparent background. Um, and that last bit, a PNG with a transparent background, is the important bit uh, that I want you guys to, you know, key in on as I kind of start talking about this, and I'll, I'll show the importance of that in just a second. Uh, but no, there is a difference between just a regular PNG and a PNG with a transparent background. So, what I'm going to do is upload, uh, you can see this is in my downloads file, uh, and so you can see I've Name these JPEG and this is a PNG. So I'll pull in the JPEG first. Uh, it's really going to take a little bit to load. And if I just select that and load it into this document, what it's going to do is load in as a background. Um, and it's going to crop it all weird, or you know, this is the sizing of a shirt that I would put up on Merch by Amazon or any other print on demand platform. And this is not going to allow me to really move this around or manipulate the photo really the way that I would want to. Uh, now, there are some things that you can do to try and make PNGs more usable uh, by going to this Layouts tab, and there are you know, a lots of different layouts here, and these layouts are actually dynamic, which means that you can move them around and change how they look. Um, but if you're trying to make a t-shirt design, it's really, really hard uh, to try and use this layout and manipulate a photo in such a way that it would look good on a shirt. Uh, because if I were to save this photo in this section, it would also save all the colors, and this would just be uh, extremely hard to design uh, something that would look good for a shirt with. So I don't usually suggest that you're using JPEGs inside of Spark, uh, especially for apparel. If you're doing book covers, there's a few strategies that you can use them. Uh, as I showed off in the last video as well, I did actually use an image in there. Uh, so you can do that and you can manipulate it uh, to look okay. Uh, but definitely for shirts, I would stay away from using JPEG images inside of Spark. It's just a hard thing to do. So if I jump back in here and change this layout back to the way it was, um, I'll actually, I'm going to change that. Just looking at my face that close uh, is not what I want to do right now. So I'm going to go ahead and change this background color. And I'm going to import now a PNG photo, again, with a transparent background. That way you guys can see just how differently this tool uh, interacts with PNGs with a transparent background than just a regular JPEG. And so I keep saying that transparent background, uh, and the reason that is important is because the transparent background is what changes the pop the properties excuse me uh, of this image so it is going to take a few seconds for this to load in hopefully not too long um, but once this is in you'll see that I can manipulate this in a much better fashion uh, and I can actually do things that will allow me to uh, you know use this photo in such a way that it would look good on a t-shirt if I did want to use uh, just a regular photo that either I had taken or that I found uh, you know free to use 
So you can tell this is much different. It's not exploded in the entire background. Uh, it is its own little box here that I can drag around. I can align to things. I can resize it. Uh, and I can even rotate this thing around and flip it. And it just has a lot of different uh, properties that a regular JPEG does not have. Um, and so this is a PNG. Uh, it has a little bit of extra room over here. And that's what gives it its transparent background. You can't see that because it is transparent. Um, but that's how I was able to manipulate this photo and actually get this in here. Uh, so for shirts, I don't see this being like a huge thing that's going to allow me to now go after like a completely different section of the market. Uh, but for books, I know this is definitely something that people will be interested in doing uh, for KDP is being able to have an image inside of KDP and like layer them over each other if you want to do like some type of collage or add an author's picture to the back of your book. There's a lot of really good uses uh, for knowing how to use this tool and how to manipulate uh, Spark the way that we want it. Again, Again, Spark is made for social media posts. I don't think the people at Adobe uh, really notice that we're doing this with their tool. I've reached out to them to see if what we're doing is cool, and they said yes. Uh, and I'm trying to like mention it more and more, so maybe they'll give us some more love and some tools that will help us out a little bit more. Um, but this is definitely me just like figuring out uh, how to push this tool to its limits and show off, you know, to you guys to teach you what I'm learning uh, and how you can use this for your business. I think it's a really, really strong platform and there's still probably a lot of capabilities that I'm not even aware of uh, of this tool just because you kind of have to think outside the box. And that's why I said at the beginning of this video, uh, I'm open to having discussion about this. If you guys know another way uh, to get images inside of Spark that you can manipulate them in such a way, um, you know, like this where you can rotate them and add multiples, uh, you know, if I even wanted to duplicate this out to show you guys, you can have multiple images in here. Um, and do all kinds of crazy things with each one of them, uh, which is pretty cool. But if you guys know any tips, especially around this multiple images uh, idea, this was something that I just found out this week uh, because I've gotten this question quite a bit. Uh, and today I was kind of determined to figure out like what a solution could possibly be. Uh, and so I was pretty happy that I figured it out and sharing it here with you guys. Uh, and again, more information like this will be inside of our course. So if you want to learn Spark, if you want to learn the ins and outs of this tool uh, and how you can use this to to be competitive in both print on demand and also KDP, uh, definitely uh, check out that course. It will be in the description and also just check out Spark. This is a great tool and it's free. So again, back outside, uh, as someone who works inside all day, I will take any opportunity I get uh, to shoot video outside. Uh, but hopefully you enjoyed that little video, uh, again, speaking about Spark and uh, just how much I like this tool and knowing, again, that it's mostly made for social media, uh, but we can definitely make, you know, those KDP book covers and uh, good shirt art or, you know, apparel art as well uh, and be competitive with it. So uh, I enjoy the tool for that reason. And if you could give us a like or dislike, letting me know how you felt about this content if i should be doing more stuff like this if you'd like to see more traveling uh all of that uh feedback that i get definitely helps and helps me uh decide you know how i should be making these videos i want to be making about three videos a week in here uh but i'm not quite sure what the type of content that i should be putting up so if you guys let me know i will make that kind of content but all right guys as always till next time i'm here though i may be a weirdo but this is my year yo my life may be crazy my lack of the lazy has let me do that I love on the daily day